the fortress world of Cadia. No one would consider any part of the Warhammer 40k universe to be a peaceful place, as war and violence are core aspects of its identity. That being said, there are places that are more or less peaceful than other places, and perhaps one of the least peaceful places in the entire galaxy is the planet of Cadia. Located on the doorstep of Hell, Cadia is easily one of the most famous planets in the Imperium, known for producing some of the finest soldiers to ever live, and defending the Imperium from a constant stream of threats, leading to the popular phrase of Cadia Stands. Its unique existence and high level of importance to the Imperium makes it a principal topic of discussion, and so we're going to take a brief look at Cadia's culture and history. Let's start with some of the basic facts about Cadia. It's a human habitable planet with a comfortable average temperature and a variety of different biomes, from frozen tundras to large forests. By and large, it's a rather average planet, although there is one unique feature, a series of thousands of large pylons spread across the surface. Nearly 6,000 of them dot the planet's surface, with a further 2,000 either buried or in various states of disrepair. None of them are identical in design, but each stand about a half a kilometer tall and extend a quarter kilometer into the ground. Each of them also feature slim, winding tunnels inside of them, each no wider than a man's head and each exactly 250 meters long. The pylons were of mysterious origin to the Imperium, and were made of an unknown substance, and despite the Mechanicum's extensive efforts, they failed to make any headway into discovering their secrets. We'll come back to the pylons later, but the most notable aspect of the planet Cadia is its proximity to the massive warp rift known as the Eye of Terror. The eye is a segment of space in which the warp bleeds over into the material realm, and so it is home to the largest concentration of the forces of chaos in real space. It is not a naturally occurring phenomenon, however, and was actually formed by the Old Ones during the war in heaven against the Necrons. The Old Ones possessed great psychic power, and used rifts in the warp to power their abilities against the Necrons. The Necrons managed to close up these rifts, including the Eye of Terror, but it would later be reopened by the psychic shockwave that accompanied the birth of the Chaos God Slanesh during the fall of the Eldar. Much of the Eldar's empire was located in the region now covered by the Eye of Terror, meaning that many of their homeworlds are now out of reach. Cadia is special for one specific reason, and that's due to it being the nearest planet to a section of the Eye that's become known as the Cadian Gate. Most of the Eye of Terror is highly unpredictable, and entering it from most angles is extremely dangerous, save for the Cadian Gate, a section that is relatively stable and calm. This means that it's the most viable location for the forces of Chaos to launch an attack into real space, leading Cadia to become arguably the most important fortress world in the Imperium, a bastion to protect the rest of the Imperium from a wide-scale invasion of Chaos. Let's move on to take a look at the planet's colonization history. The planet was originally colonized by humans, presumably during the Age of Technology thousands of years prior to the present day. During the Age of Strife, they, like practically all other human colonies, became isolated, and during this isolation, they ended up turning to the gods of Chaos. Much later, during the Imperium's Great Crusade to reunite all of the lost colonies, Cadia was approached by the Primarch Lorgar and his Word Bearers Legion. This was an unfortunate happenstance for the Imperium, as most of the Primarchs would have merely slaughtered the heathens, but Lorgar chose to go and speak with them. 
Lorgar and his legion had very recently been chastised and humiliated by the Emperor of Mankind due to their belief in the Emperor as a deity, and their willingness to spread this doctrine to worlds they visited. This was completely counter to the Imperial truth that the Emperor wished to propagate, but Lorgar was unique in that he was imbued with an innate sense of faith, and believed that religion represented the pinnacle of human expression. After the Emperor ordered the Ultramarines to raise a highly religious city to the ground, Lorgar fell into a deep melancholy, but soon set out on a great pilgrimage to discover the truth about divinity. This led Lorgar eventually to Cadia, where he would meet a native there named Ingathel. Ingathel called him by name, and she would end up being a guiding force for Lorgar on his path to worshipping the Chaos Gods. Additionally, Ingathel led a chapter of the Word Bearers into the Eye of Terror, where they looked upon the devastated Eldar homeworlds. Ingathel lied to them about how they had fallen, however, instead telling them that the Eldar fell because they were unable to accept the primordial truth, that chaos not only exists, but is inherently tied to the material realm. Here, Lorgar and the Word Bearers learned that not only did the Emperor lie to them about the existence of spirits and gods, but Ingathel led them to believe that they must accept the worship of chaos to be truly saved. Following this, Lorgar ordered a cyclonic bombardment of the planet, wiping out every last native Cadian in order to bury this truth, believing that he alone had been entrusted with it by the gods of chaos. Later, at the end of the Horus Heresy, the majority of the traitor legions managed to escape from the Imperium by fleeing into the Eye of Terror. This wouldn't become a well-known fact for centuries, however, as most leaders in the Imperium didn't believe that they could have survived in the Eye. At some point after the Heresy, the Imperium had recolonized Cadia, although it was yet to be built into the massive fortress world it would later become. Eventually though, in the year 781 of the 31st millennium, a legion of traitor space marines, the Black Legion, emerged from the Eye of Terror to launch a crusade, led by Abaddon the Despoiler. Abaddon was once Ezekiel Abaddon, the first captain of the Sons of Horus Legion, but was now the head of a major force of Chaos-tainted Astartes. The only force in the area that stood to combat this crusade was that of the Black Templars chapter of Astartes, led by Sigismund, who had searched for Abaddon for centuries before discovering that the traitor Astartes had fled into the Eye. Sigismund stood in defense of the Imperium, despite no one really believing in his claims, and he and his legion managed to temporarily thwart the attack in what became known as the First Battle of Cadia. Unfortunately, Sigismund lost his life in a duel against Abaddon, and while the Black Templars sent word to the rest of the Imperium about the Crusade, Abaddon recovered and launched a full-scale invasion of the world surrounding the Eye of Terror, plunging them into mayhem and chaos. The First Black Crusade came to an end when the Imperium eventually sent forth the Imperial Guard, the Astartes, and the Adeptus Mechanicus to push it back into the Eye of Terror. In the aftermath, realizing how vital the world of Cadia would be against future Crusades, the Imperium began to build up its defenses. Cadia would go on to become a focal point of attention during a total of 13 Black Crusades, all led by Abaddon, and we'll get to the 13th and final one in a bit, but let's talk a bit about Cadia and its people from this point on. The Imperium of Mankind in Warhammer 40k consists of hundreds of thousands of colonized planets, and these planets are generally divided up by their specific focus. Forge worlds are those specifically dedicated to crafting weapons and equipment for the endless war. Agri worlds are dedicated to food production. Shrine worlds are dedicated to the worship of the god emperor, and so on. Cadia's specialty is war, and so every last aspect of its existence within the Imperium 
is devoted to the military. It's said that nearly 72% of Cadia's population at any given time is armed and ready for battle, and Cadian children are taught how to strip, reassemble, and shoot a las gun before being taught how to read. By the age of 10, most of these children can perform infantry field drills and are proficient in killing, joining the youth armies to train alongside regular soldiers and fight mock battles with each other in the Cadian wilderness. Coming of age, 1 in 10 Cadians would be assigned to the interior guard, regardless of their skills, spending their entire military careers defending Cadia, while half of the able-bodied Cadians would join the shock troop regiments. Cadian shock troopers are often regarded as the greatest troops in the entire Imperium, short of the Space Marines. Their marksmanship, loyalty, and discipline is practically second to none due to being trained for war since birth, and so they're often shipped off to other conflicts. Cadia may be a planet constantly under threat from the forces of chaos, but the big crusades only happen once in a while, and Cadia continues to constantly pump out some of the most capable soldiers in the Imperium. In addition to soldiers, Cadia is heavily industrialized and geared towards the production of military equipment, so not only are the shock troopers armed with the best, Cadia is also the largest exporter of arms and munitions in the region. Obviously, this concept of militarization extends across all lines of the planet's society. The planet is under permanent martial law and the role of policing the population falls upon the interior guard. Every city on Cadia is a fortress, protected by powerful void shields capable of withstanding days of punishing orbital bombardment, and they're encircled by rings of gun emplacements and weapon batteries. The streets of each city were laid out in elaborate geometric patterns, like an intricate puzzle, and every building was constructed to act as a strong point in the city's defense, for example having ammunition dumps stored in bunkers underneath bakeries, gun emplacements on public auditoriums, and people's living rooms doubling as pillboxes. Should the outer defenses of a city fail, the people could hold each city for months, even years, due to their mastery of urban warfare. That being said, the planet wasn't entirely law-abiding, as there were scores of gangs operating in each city, and hundreds of chaos cults worked to corrupt the population from inside. To help combat this, a number of inquisitors of the Ordo Malleus worked as part of the Cadian military, in a force known as the Internal Guard. Of course, Cadia also had a substantial navy presence protecting it, notably Battle Fleet Cadia, as well as the planet being constantly patrolled by Imperial aircraft who would shoot down any incoming craft that failed to transmit the daily access codes. For thousands of years, Cadia stood as a bastion against a constant onslaught of chaos, including twelve more Black Crusades after the first. Each time, the people of Cadia managed to thwart Abaddon the Despoiler, protecting the rest of the Imperium from the mindless slaughter that would ensue should they fail. That brings us to the 13th Black Crusade, which took place in the year 999 of the 41st millennium, and was the largest mobilization of both Imperial and Chaos forces since the Horus Heresy. Let's go back to discussing the pylons across Cadia for a moment. The truth of the pylons was that they were actually made of a substance called blackstone, a material that has a rather unique property of manipulating the warp. It was used heavily by the Necrons to create entire regions of space free from the touch of the warp, and it's believed that they were responsible for creating all of the pylons across Cadia. The pylons protect Cadia from being subsumed by the Eye of Terror, as well as maintaining the Cadian Gate. 
Abaddon's plan for the 13th Crusade, therefore, was to overload all of the pylons on the planet, causing the Eye of Terror to transform it into a demon world, and then he would continue to expand the Eye until Terra itself is swallowed up. An entire video could certainly be made on the 13th Black Crusade, but for now I'll just sum up the notable events. The first sign that an invasion was imminent came in the form of numerous Space Hulks appearing out of the Eye of Terror and entering into the Cadian Sector. Space Hulks are masses of multiple ships that have been fused together due to the warp, and are often used by forces of chaos or orcs to conceal their troops. Many of these Space Hulks were taken care of, but some slipped by and managed to attack strategically important worlds around the sector, crippling the region's naval forces. This was compounded with the presence of the Plague Fleet, a Death Guard fleet of ships led by Typhus, the herald of Nurgle the Plague Lord. A great epidemic spread, along with the sudden appearance of a large number of apocalyptic cults causing anarchy to break out across numerous worlds. The pylons of Cadia seem to erupt into life in response to this, appearing to be fighting back the powers of the warp that were breaking out. In order to ensure that Cadia remained a fortress against chaos, the Cadian High Command ordered that every regiment of the Cadian shock troops was to gather on Cadia itself. To handle this, hundreds of extra landing fields were assembled at the Tyrock Fields, and millions of men began to gather there from all corners. Unfortunately, a great betrayal occurred here, as the Volscani Regiment, considered by many to be the most hardened fighters in the sector, suddenly turned on the unsuspecting Cadian forces. They exchanged their Cadian and Imperial banners for those of Chaos and unleashed a wave of devastation across the fields, killing hundreds of thousands over the course of the following hours. Not only were a great number of soldiers lost, but also the governor of Cadia and nearly all of the Cadian High Command. Additionally, one of the governor's advisors managed to make it inside of the nearby fortress city, but his body was inflicted with a great plague. To prevent an epidemic spreading across Cadia, the entire city was forcefully quarantined. The other worlds in the Cadian sector soon fell, and the majority of the Imperial fleet here had either been crippled or destroyed. So began Abaddon's invasion of Cadia directly, starting with a massive orbital bombardment and continuing with an unprecedented amount of Chaos Space Marines, Demons, and Chaos Titans. Despite this, the forces of Cadia, joined by the 13th Company of the Space Wolves, managed to hold off the Chaos armies into a bloody stalemate. The Imperial Navy also received reinforcements to try and launch a counterattack and push Abaddon's forces back into the Cadian Gate. While this was ongoing, the Word Bearers Traitor Legion, led by Erebus, began enacting terrible rituals on the various Imperial worlds they captured, unleashing horrific warp storms and hordes of demons across other sectors. The White Scars chapter of Marines began to counterattack these hordes, Cadia was reinforced by the Blood Angels, and the Dark Angels, Space Wolves, Black Templars, Grey Knights, and Imperial Fists began to arrive to help out on other surrounding planets. Things began to look better for the Imperium on turning back the Crusade, until the rituals of Erebus and the Word Bearers reached their peak. The entire region around the Eye of Terror was attacked by a warp storm so intense that it cut off the entire war zone from further reinforcements, and the Imperium's problems were compounded by the encroach of both a Tyranid Horde and an Orc Warband. Before long, the Cadian Sector did not look good, and Cadia itself looked to be on the verge of falling. By the end of the millennium, Abaddon began a fresh attack on the last remaining major bastion of Cadia, 
defended by the remaining Cadian shock troopers, as well as some space wolves, dark angels, black templars, and adepta sororitas. The remnants of the imperial navy in orbit were soon beset by a fresh attack from Abaddon's fleet, spearheaded by a planet-destroying ship called the Will of Eternity. Elsewhere, Trazin the Infinite, a Necron known for preserving the past and collecting a great deal of rare technologies and relics, was disturbed by an unknown force. This leads him to trace the disturbances to the Eye of Terror, and he decides to resolve the crisis by going to Cadia himself. Thanks to his machinations, in which he was able to take control of the Chaos tanks and turn them against the forces of Chaos, as well as the sudden appearance of Saint Celestine of the Adeptus Sororitas, the Imperium was able to push back Abaddon and destroy the Will of Eternity. Meanwhile, Mechanicum Magos Belisarius Call discovered Abaddon's plan to destroy the pylons, and reluctantly accepted Trezine's help to modify the pylons to prevent this. Thanks to their efforts, the pylons activated and began to depower the demons and psychers, as well as causing the warp to recede. This soon caused Abaddon to retreat, but in orbit, he proceeded to attach engines to the fragments of the Will of Eternity, causing them to smash into Cadia's surface. This resulted in Cadia literally splitting apart, and the pylons began to falter. A mass evacuation was ordered across Cadia, but the evacuation plans were completely outdated and infeasible. Imperial ships desperately struggled to pick up survivors as they were beset by Chaos vessels and the expanding warp. Only around three million Cadians managed to survive as the planet split apart, and the destruction of the pylons holding back the Eye of Terror allowed the Black Legion to continue to rampage across Imperial space. The 13th Black Crusade eventually was halted by Imperial forces, but the damage was done, and Cadia was no more. One of the most famous rallying cries, at least in the 40k fandom, is that Cadia broke before the guard did, a reference to the sheer discipline and force of will that the Imperium's finest can demonstrate, even in the darkest of times. The Imperium of Mankind certainly aren't the good guys of Warhammer 40k, as there isn't such a thing, but we as humans enjoy tales of heroism against all odds, and it's hard to find a better example of that than Cadia. Cadia stood practically in the doorway to hell, and its people gave their lives for thousands of years to protect others from mindless slaughter. The Imperium definitely isn't in the greatest of positions in the 42nd millennium, but the fall of Cadia will forever be a sore spot in Imperial history. That being said, even though the planet may have fallen, as long as the spirit of its people persists in the heart of the Imperium, Cadia stands. <laughs>